all three languages pick up a headset. We're going to be talking about smart systems and technology. And within this panel, what we're going to do is in an hour and a quarter, talk about different things. And as time goes on, I will hand the floor over to the expert in that specific area. So that's how I'm going to work. When we talk about systems, the first thing that I ought to mention is how our system works. And there it is. Brilliant. So I'll explain to you a little bit about what our system, in, how it works. In recent years, what we've done is we've channeled our system into strategies. We're looking at, we examine the government strategy, its main strategies within the government, and the idea is to channel everything into what we call an overarching strategy. We set out our priorities within this strategy right at the outset. But for us, we were always clear that strategy isn't something that's fixed. It's something that is moving. So we've got different hubs in different VET schools that work on energy, sustainability, etc. So what we're going to do is look more closely in at these We've come across different situations and we've de designed different programs. One is for the schools itself. These school-based uh, projects are short-term projects with a view to obtaining a goal in a year. Those that require more time are different. So if there are schools and SMEs that have a specific need, what we do, um, if we find a specific piece of knowledge in a school that can be applied to the small or medium enterprise, then we put them into contact. They always collaborate. That's how we work. There are uh, schools, technology centers and universities where knowledge is created. But what we want to do is to apply that knowledge, apply that knowledge to our projects. What's the point of having it? Otherwise, we work, we collaborate together because the idea is to transfer knowledge back into society, of course. Knowledge transfer can be done directly. Each uh, project can have its own transfer, but that's a little bit limited to that model. So what we try to do is to get that knowledge into VET, to our teachers and to the people that are in VET, and then use the VET school to expand, to send that knowledge out. And that way we feel it reaches the rest of society as strongly as possible. So at the centre of our model, we've got our teaching staff. These are the people who are in charge of developing projects, of supervising and um, surveilling how they're progressing. They are transferring that knowledge. So those are, they're the center. They receive the knowledge and then they teach that knowledge. They pass that knowledge in, on in their classrooms in the VET schools because that's where that knowledge then emanates out into uh, society. Why do we do that? What sort of uh, technology moves us? What are our priorities? Where do we want to work? From now onwards until 11.15, we're going to try to talk to you about our areas of interest. And to do so, we'll have the support of uh, certain experts. But first, let's look at the world of automotion. There's electric cars. We've got in autonomous driving sensors in vehicles, technology that uh, is included into the world of automotion. So our students need to have the skills to create and maintain that technology. I think yesterday you saw a project called Euskalek. And Euskalek, students at our uh, schools manufacture their own electric cars. They use IFE and mobile within our electro mobility strategy and we're seeing some great results. Another area of interest is what we call the Internet of Things. You see more and more devices 
that can be managed uh, from a computer or from a handheld device. But how do you integrate all of these uh, elements for one single goal? And what might that single uh, goal be? Well, smart uh, homes or support to the disabled. In Technica, we've got a a building which is 800 square meters big to work on the Internet of Things. And the third area of interest is biomodels. We're talking here about scanners, CT scans, and we can get information from CT scans and segment it. We can print models, print bio models, and those bio models could then be given to medical practitioners as You've already seen the key word here is collaboration. People need to come together. And in this case, we've got the collaboration of Technum, Biodonosti, Technica and others. This collaboration has existed. You have to be careful, of course, and consider what sort of things others are doing, but to gradually uh, renew things. And talking about collaboration, we always try to help the whole of society. There are different things we can do in VET. There's uh, different uh, knowledge types, and that all can respond to the problems that SMEs have because these SMEs have difficulties in really dealing with technology. Thanks to this, we can help them improve their technological services. What's more, we're working on composites, which is another field of work where we do go through different processes, but with composites, What's really interesting for us is the skill to simulate composites. That's the next leap forward. Are we going to be able to do what's done in metals, i.e. everything that's built? Can it be calculated using finite elements? I don't know if you've s the photos behind me now, but in the we'll field of composite, we're collaborating with ICALAN, with the University of Mondragon, and we're now showing you how we managed to manufacture this device for this uh, guy to simulate the real situation as closely as possible. We're also working on additive manufacturing with metal additives. In this case, we work on uh, three different technologies. We, we use a laser, metallic uh, powder, projected laser. And what you can actually see behind me now is like a thread metal. Metal is gradually added using the heat of electric arc welding. This is the company that we're working with. And we're hoping in a very short space of time that we will be able to market this uh, machine with Arilan so that this technology can be used in the market. Let's now forget about uh, metal for the moment and talk about other materials such as plastic. In our schools, in the majority of them, they virtually all have a 3D printing rooms or 3D printing classrooms. We've called them ECAS labs. There, our students are able to take their first steps in 3D printing and what uses 3D printing can, can be put to. The world of 3D printing, I mean, is enormous. It can be used for all sorts of things, materials. I mean, 3D, 3D printing can be used for any sort of uh, profession. We can even print uh, clothes, furniture, electronics. You can prototype uh, 3D printing. Of course, everything will depend upon the quality of the machine and what sort of material you're going to be using for the printing. Of course, you need top quality uh, machines. But there's going to be a huge leap in profession 
when you deal with professional 3D printers. There are other kinds of uh, printers that would we could be used in our classrooms, but there's all sorts of things that can be printed. We can get a 3D image any way we want. We can design thinking of processes. We can optimize our design because printing now gives us so much creative freedom. We can get all sorts of designs. We can get organic. Uh, Im After hearing about all these uh, priorities, uh, let's talk also about uh, challenges. Nowadays, we talk about uh, IT, communication, computers. We have all that and many other devices any uh, um, device, even any home appliance has uh, an electronic uh, element. So there has been a great development in all of these uh, fields. There has been a, gr a lot of uh, innovation also in other uh, fields. Nowadays, everything that's designed is designed with uh, a CAD and we have three different uh, models in uh, one same computer. We can also simulate uh, processes and the simulation of uh, processes allows us uh, uh, to have all this information in our computer with different uh, variables and uh, data. We can uh, follow up uh, processes and uh, scale and even if we're not in the uh, plant workshop, we're able to know what is uh, happening. Therefore, we face uh, uh, and we have a different reality. We have a virtual reality, a physical, but also a virtual reality. And let's talk about this uh, augmented reality in immersive uh, environments. These are instruments that are very adequate to work, but also to learn. Here we see a system that can capture movement, as you can see on the screen. Or we can also teach our um, students to work the different uh, simulators. I think you are going to now see a crane in a 3G environment. So we can create this uh, crane, and with this image, our students can learn in an easier manner. So this is something that was uh, created by our teachers, and they can also uh, uh, be taught how to uh, work with a grain and also do estimates on the wind and so on and so forth. So there's uh, two important things here, those that develop the app, but also that are learning through those apps. Or here, we have other examples. So these are all uh, agents of the learning uh, process tools that allow us to learn in an easier manner. We can learn how to uh, paint these doors. We have uh, welding simulators and many other tools so that before we do it in real life, we're able to simulate that situation and learn through it. So as I was saying, we have a real world, but also a virtual world. And I'm not only speaking about uh, simulators, but also about uh, data. This uh, virtual world uh, provides uh, us with different uh, possibilities. And with this, I'm uh, introducing the next uh, speakers, because we have a digital twin. Uh, one day we will have a digital twin. They will do surgery on our digital twin. And if it, things go well, then I will get the surgery. So regarding um, digital twins, there's uh, many things uh, to work on. And I'm not only speaking about uh, small uh, parts. Let's move on. And as you can see, we're talking about uh, different technologies and the word Revolution has uh, cropped up, the 4.0 revolution. It's a very fashionable term. It's what a term that we all use all the time. And behind all of this is a great deal of technology, skills. We've got robotics, collaborative robotics, protocols, communications, all sorts of subjects. There's all sorts of advantages that society expects to glean uh, from this. And a lot of these benefits are related to time-saving process 
process, quicker processes that machines provide us with information. And according to that information, we will take decisions very swiftly. All of this is, of course, uh, interrelated, interconnected. People talk about AI, artificial intelligence, uh, that is able to... Uh, be intelligent in more complex ways, but this is a changing our environment. So our students who in the future will be the workers of the future have to go to a company and not perhaps next year, but five years from now, they're going to find different environments, different environments in which they're going to have to interact with different machines. They're going to have to follow different uh, routes and they're going to have to do that very quickly and learn about it very quickly. So it's in this context that we have set up a project which we call Workshop 4.0. The idea of Workshop 4.0 is that different teams in a mechanical workshop are interconnected with each other and using an ERP system, this is managed, and so at our VET school students can already work on these uh, experience. Everything is challenge-based. Timetables are prepared. Everything is fed into the system. Each student can book a machine. The machine will then uh, talk to the system and the system manages everything. Any incident it appears in the system and here you can see the first steps of this workshop 4.0. We've got our storage, our warehouse, and here you can see how a student checks everything, looks at the part, he adds the part. This is a real, a real true working environment. Students are used to using these new way of working, but somebody has to create these environments. Everybody has to be able to connect the different sensors, the different robots. Somebody has to integrate all of this and to do that, to work on all these technologies, we're still collaborating with SMC training and it's thanks to SMC training we have all these pieces of equipment that in this case uh, is manufacturing uh, simulating a manufacturing process so we've got a simulation team and then see what happens after simulation in reality what we're interested in here is that our students use safe protocols that they're able to work with all the sensors and that all this information is collected together and a mess system which is uh, managed externally manages everything and that helps companies receive new services. If we're asked for um, a package in the mobile mobile it goes from one mobile to another we can offer these kinds of services thanks to our uh, production plants being connected provided they're appropriately connected we even said to parents of children that that's what their children are doing when they come to RVET schools this is an option of course but there's risks attached to this option because if we uh, put everything in the hands of technology and that technology we share over the internet then I'm sure you can probably imagine the risks that were out there what would happen if somebody hacked into this but the risk is out there our systems work but they need to be safe we need to be able to protect them and there are two levels to that protection. You've got the technological uh, level, i.e. we design safe models at the outset that aren't easy to access. And there's another level which is related to our habits, our personal habits. What do I do? What do I do to protect the environment? We're now at the end of this morning's session. Thank you, Manu. But before finishing, I would like to explain a couple of things. We've talked about uh, systems and uh, many issues of interest, but I would like to give you some data and uh, results. As I've said before, we work in uh, nodes. We work on four uh, nodes, and there's 19 centers involved.
They carry out all kinds of activities and the transfer of uh, knowledge happens from here to the other centers. We're working in uh, 19 specialization areas. Most of the um, issues uh, addressed are addressed as specialization uh, fields. The uh, teachers uh, work on all of this. We've also talked about different uh, projects and projects uh, proposals. Sometimes they're uh, longer projects, other times shorter projects, but we rec received around 180. And then all of this reaches out to the uh, training centers. And we also provide uh, services to um, businesses. And through these uh, services, we uh, provide help to SMEs. And then I would also like to add that uh, the attendees or the people we've uh, assisted have been almost uh, 3,000. And then we have the teacher training. We train them to be able to reach out uh, to uh, others. And uh, we've had 736 uh, hours of class in these new technologies and 519 uh, teachers that have uh, been um, learning. These uh, teachers use their knowledge in training in one year. They've taught almost 2,500 uh, hours. And we also have a training for employment for the unemployed, almost 2,000 hours and 355 students. Only for this specific uh, project that I'm talking about. And we also have a training for companies through us the centers. It's been 278 hours and almost 190 students that have been uh, trained in this uh, projects that we are developing. Every year, we measure the impact. And we're talking about the yearly impact. But once the project goes to the centers, then it can be repeated. But we only measure the impact uh, during the first years. So on the middle and long term, the impact is uh, much uh, bigger, or at least uh, that's uh, our, the way we see it. And at the end of the day, this is the aim, that knowledge goes to our teachers and to our students, and that we can... Concluyo yo con esta parte. Manu, Miquel, Estefan, Stephanie, muchas gracias por vuestras ponencias.